came in like a missile, like a fireball missile across from the New York Harbor side, I guess in the north direction. It came in like a spear, just speared through the building like a fireball. I've never seen more up close, but today I have. It's just this sound, this rumble. Mass cloud coming at us. It's intense. All right, good evening once again. Good evening. And um, welcome uh, once again to uh, this uh, summer prophecy seminar. And um, I just want to share that we have titled this um, seminar Never Forget. And um, as you've heard, um, Sister Val in the, in the, in the health. She ended by saying, may we never forget um, the words that are able to lead us uh, to good health. So uh, once again, I want to reiterate that we'll be here Monday, Wednesday, uh, Thursday, and Friday at 6.30. Um, we hope uh, to spend just a little time here with you, uh, sharing the health and sharing um, some of the truths that the Lord has shown unto us. Uh, specifically, um, because we are in New York City, the Lord has open light specific to the city, and we would like to share these truths so that um, men and women in this great city uh, can awaken to what is in store, and they can awaken to what God is doing for the saving of all who may. So I invite everyone to kneel with me silently as I pray, and as I pray, I, I ask that you would pray silently with me um, and invite God's presence uh, in here, pray for the, 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 the preacher and pray that heavenly angels will be here to help us understand the truth alongside the Holy Spirit to comfort us and to guide us into all truth. Shall we reverently kneel for prayer? Amen. The title of our presentation, uh, our seminar, as I said, is Never Forget. And tonight's uh, uh, topic, or tonight's uh, presentation is titled Window to the New World. And um, by God's grace, I hope that I, as when we finish, you can have a glimpse into a world, a spiritual world, a world uh, that, that is necessary for the saving of your soul, a, a world that we all must tap into if we ought to be saved in these last days. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, as Sister Val was going over the health, um, she raised some nice points. And one of the, why we need health because we are sick. And in Isaiah chapter 1, the Bible says the whole head is sick, the whole heart is faint. And if we are sick, then we need healing. We need a healer. We need someone. And there's a story in the Bible, I like it very much, of the centurion that came to Christ. And if we go to Mark chapter 8, this is not in the notes. Mark chapter 8, verses 5 to 10. I just want to start with this story. I think this story sets the, sets the tone for helping us to understand healing. All right? And healing, as Sister Val uh, mentioned, is both natural and spiritual. We need healing for our natural body. We need healing for our spiritual body. And this story fits both um, contexts, both the natural and the spiritual. Because um, we will see that the centurion himself by his faith, was healed, right? It, it, it doesn't say that in the story, but because of his faith in Christ, he also re it, it, he received healing because he was wise enough to know that he didn't, have, he didn't need Christ to come. Christ, he had that wisdom. Where did that wisdom come from? All wisdom comes from God. Amen? Amen? So his mind itself was also healed. That's why he understood that all Christ had to do was spoke. Well, let's read. It says in Matthew 8 and verse 5, and when Jesus was entered unto Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, 
and saying, Lord, my servant layeth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I, I will come and heal him. I just want to point out here, right here, Jesus is showing why he came. His response was, I will come and heal him. Take your mind to heaven for a bit. Take your mind to heaven for a bit. When it was brought to the Father, that earth had fallen. Jesus said to the Father, I will go and heal them. Amen? Amen? And this is why we need this healing, right? This is, this is why we have to um, make our hearts open to Christ. But let's continue on. The Bible says, The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest send, thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. The centurion had a knowledge that it was the word of Christ was enough to heal him. Amen? Amen. 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 For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh, and to my servant do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said unto them, uh, said unto them I, um, that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. So this centurion used the natural, and he understood the spiritual. Amen. He used his natural life, understanding that Christ was able to healed, heal his servant, even without being there. Amen? Amen. Sadly enough, sadly, sin has brought us to a point where we want to see Christ. Because all Christ had to do was, Christ could have spoken the word from heaven, amen? amen. Because the Bible says, and God said, and there was. He spoke the word from heaven and the earth was created perfect. So the word is capable of healing, amen? amen. But man, man in his stubbornness refused to listen to the word, so Christ himself had to come. But how did Christ come? Psalms 40 and verse 7, the Bible says, Then I said, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me. Where do we find the Savior who came? In the volume of the book. Our healing is found in the volume of the book that contains the truth about Jesus Christ, our only healer. Amen? Amen. And so with, 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 um, as we begin, we would, go in, we would go through the scriptures, look at a few texts, showing and trying to bring our minds to a place where we can understand and have firm confidence that indeed, in the volume of the book, it is written of Christ, the only healer of mankind. Amen? Now, the only person that can tell you about themselves is the person himself. Amen? Amen. Therefore, the only person that can explain what they mean when they say is the person themselves. So we're going into the Bible, we're looking at what Christ has said to mankind. Amen? Therefore, the only person who can explain what Christ has said is whom? Christ. It's Christ. Which means the Bible then must explain itself. Amen. Amen? The Bible must explain itself. And so we're going to go through the scriptures, have the scriptures explain itself to us. That way we can be sure that we can put our foot on that firm platform. That we can be sure that this volume of the book that was given to us, the Bible, is the book that is made for our healing. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let us go to our first slide. Well-known text. Everyone in the world almost knows this. Even, even atheists know this text. John 3.16. We can recite that even though we've never set foot into a church. The Bible said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Why do we need everlasting life? All right, that's the question. We need everlasting life because we lost it. Man once was given a path to everlasting life in the Garden of Eden. But through sin, we lost it. So God in his love sent Christ. And Christ himself said, Lo, in the volume of the book, it is written of me, the one who was sent. So let us continue. How do we re regain then this eternal life that we have lost? The Bible says we must believe on Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? And the Bible explains what that means. So let us go through the scriptures. John chapter 17 and verse 3, the Bible says, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. sent. The one that was sent to give eternal life. Amen? Amen? Amen. So, in knowing Christ, 
and knowing God, the Father, we can receive eternal life. Let us continue. First Chronicles chapter 28 and verse 9. First Chronicles 28 and verse 9. Here we have David, the father, speaking to Solomon, the son. Amen? An illustration of Christ, the son, getting instruction from his, from his father. And the Bible says you must know what? The true God, the father, and Christ, the son. So this text helps us to see how the father and the son deals with one another. Amen? Let us go. Um, verse 9. It says, And thou, Solomon... My son, know thou the God of thy father and serve him with a perfect heart and a willing mind. That teaches us that Christ served his father with a perfect mind and a willing heart. Amen? It says, For the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imagination of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off. So how do we find Christ? The Bible says, seek. If we seek him, he will be found. And these words are sure. If we do it, he will be found. Amen? Amen? Let us continue. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13. The Bible says, And ye shall seek me and find me. There go that, that, that promise again. And find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. So there is a work for us to do in order for Christ to heal us. We must seek him. All right? And the Bible says when we seek him with all our hearts, we are sure to find him. Let us continue. Uh, where, where do we search? We, we already kind of identified that. The Bible says, lo, I come in the volume of the book. We have to search that book. But let us see. The same book tells us um, how, where to search. It says, John 5 and verse 39 and 40. Search the scriptures. Search the what? Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have life, and they are they which testify of me, the one who came. Amen? Amen. Let's continue. And ye will not come to me that he might have life. Therefore, the converse is all who come to him is going to have life. Amen? And good health is life. Amen? Amen? Life is good health. And this is what we are seeking, both natural and spiritual health. Let us continue. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. The Bible says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must first believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So when we come to that book, when we come to the scriptures, we must first believe that God is. And the truth is, it is not difficult to believe that God is. Just look around you. Look at nature. Look at the sky. Look at the stars, look at the seas, look at the trees, look at the birds, look at the rivers, look at the water. Look how they seamlessly work in harmony day after day after day without fail. The heavens declare the glory of God. Just look, look, it tells us. So if we can look around us and recognize that someone designed these things for us, and we can come to the Bible with that knowledge that there is a God. The Bible says, when you seek him, you shall find him. Um, when, when you search for him with all your heart. And he that cometh must first believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. All right? Jeremiah 15 and verse 16. Now what happens when you seek? Right? When, you, when, 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 you, when you have purpose in your heart that God is who he is and you decide with all your heart to seek him, the Bible tells us in Jeremiah 15 and verse 16, Thy words were found. So you, you sought and you found. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. So after you seek him, the next step is to eat that which thou find. Amen? Amen? And we know you're not to eat the literal pages of the Bible. Therefore, there must be some spiritual understanding of what it means to eat. And since the Bible is his own expositor, we're going to let the Bible teach us what it means to eat. Amen? Amen. All right. So Jeremiah said, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. John chapter 1 and verse 1 and verse 14. The Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory of, as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. 
So the word, Christ, became flesh. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we all know the story. Christ came in 4 BC as a babe in, in Bethlehem. And in 27 AD, he was baptized and he began his mission for this earth. The word, Christ himself, the God of heaven, became flesh. Amen? Amen. Let us continue. John 14 and verse 6. And what did Christ say? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And the re what my reason for this text is because in John chapter 1 and verse 14, it says in him was full of grace and truth. And Christ tells us, I am the way, the truth, and the, and the life. And no man cometh, right? And the Bible says, he that cometh must what? Believe. Must first believe. Amen? So you must believe that Christ is the word made flesh when you come to him. Let us continue. John 6 and verse 44. It says, No man can come to me except the Father had sent, which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. And it is written in the prophets, And they shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh, Unto me. The Bible says, They that come shall be what of God? Shall be taught of God. All right? So let us continue. Taught what? Or how? All right? The Bible says in Isaiah 28 and verse 9, Whom shall he teach knowledge? The Bible says, They that come shall be taught of God. So the question then is asked, Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. How? For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people. To whom he said, this is the rest, wherewith he may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. But the word of the Lord, the what of the Lord? The word that was made flesh. Amen. Amen. So Christ was unto them how? Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. I just want to take this part. Okay. So the Lord, the ones that are taught of God, are taught precept upon precept. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. What that is teaching us, and a precept for, 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 in layman terms, is a, is a rule. All right? So the Lord is going to teach us rule upon rule. All right? So there are rules that governs the studying of the scriptures. One of which is the scripture must be its own expositor. The scripture must explain itself. All right? No man, uh, in other words, um, anyone that comes to you preaching the scripture must allow the scripture to tell you what it's saying. Man is simply a vessel. Amen? Amen. All right, let us continue. Continuing in John uh, chapter 6, the Bible says, Not that any man has seen the Father, save he which is of God. He hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that what? I am that bread of life. What do we do with bread? Eat we eat it. And Jeremiah said, Thy words were found, and I did eat, eat them. Amen? All right, but Christ is saying here, bread, eat bread. Amen? Amen? It says, Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. A man that is not dead is whole. Amen? Amen? Because once a man dies, what happens to his body? It begins to break down. It's no longer whole. So if we eat of this bread, the Bible tells us we would not we would not die. We would be in good health. Amen? Our health will not fail. Let us continue. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If a man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my, is my flesh. The bread that he's giving is his word. Because the Bible says the word became flesh. And he says, if a man eat that, he will live how long? Forever. So, the, so wait a minute. But all men die. So what does Christ mean by we will live forever? These are questions that come up. Amen? 
These are questions that we must ask ourselves as we study. All men die naturally. But what does Christ mean if we eat this bread, we may live forever? We eat bread now, but we still die. So it must be a spiritual bread. It must be a bread that can only come from heavenly places. Amen? Amen. Let us continue. Verse 52. Uh, then Jesus, then Ju the Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. And I will what? I will raise him up at the... So wait a minute. If you die eating this bread, you will be raised up. Raised up to what? Eternal life. Amen? This is the bread which came down from heaven. Amen? This is the bread we ought to eat. And this bread is the word of God. It says, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. And Jeremiah said, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And Christ echoes, and he says, Eat my flesh and drink my blood. My flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. And he, and he says, the, the word became flesh. Amen. So let's continue. Verse 58 says, this is the bread that came down from heaven. So Christ is that bread. However, Christ is the word. So the Bible that we have is that bread. And as we eat that bread, we will have life. But there are rules to eating that bread. In fact, in high society, these things are pretty much lost on the common man these days. But in high society, when you go to a dinner, the table is well set. Amen? There are rules to what side certain forks could be on. There are rules to even for the distance of the plate from the edge of the table. There are all these rules that govern how they partake in that dinner. Where, where are they getting these ideas from? Well, there are rules in how we ought to partake in this feast. Amen? All right, so let us continue. The Bible says in Psalms 119, verses 103, verse 105. Now you've searched for the word. Now, like Jeremiah, you begin, you have tasted the word. And this is what the Bible tells us about this word. This is the experience you will have. He says, how sweet are thy words to my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding. How shall he teach? Precept upon Precept. This is what David is echoing Isaiah. And he says, through thy precepts I gain understanding. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. All right? Isaiah 56, 55 and verse 6 tells us, Seek ye the Lord while ye may be found. Now I just want to pause there and say, if there is a time he might be found, it means there is a time when he will not be found. Which means there is a time when the time to, to find God will no longer be there. In other words, probation will close. That time will pass. So the time we have now, we are told, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. And in addition to that, call ye upon him while he is near. Let us see what the Bible uh, continues to explain to us. To seek and to call. Romans 10 and verse 13. How do we seek? How do we call? What does it mean? The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call upon him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on, in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a, without a preacher? I want to put it to us that when we seek God's word, he will guide us to a preacher. He will guide us to one whom he has set up to expound his word. Amen? Not, this is what the Bible is telling us. This is not us explaining that for ourselves. The Bible says that. It says, seek me with all your heart. It says, when, when the words are found, you eat them. It tells you that the word is the flesh. Amen? It tells you that the word is the bread. And now it's telling you when you seek him, you, you must also call upon him. But the Bible says, how are you going to call if you have not heard? And how will you hear if what? 
if there is, how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? So those who preach are what? Sent of God. And the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he what? He sent his son. Amen? But before Christ left this earth, he says, as my father has sent you, so sent, sent me, so send I you, you his disciples. Amen? Amen. Amen. There's lots, lots of, of, of thoughts that come out of that. The one that is sent is also one that is anointed. All right, these, these are little things that, that, that we will understand as we go on. So, in order to come to God, in order to call upon Him, the Bible says, the Lord, um, you must hear from the preacher. Well, let us go, let, us, let the scripture explain this preacher. All right? This preacher must have a certain message. And if you're not hearing that certain sound, then that's not the preacher the Lord sent. All right? So let us go to Matthew chapter 3 and verse 1. Matthew 3 and verse 1. The Bible says, In those days came John the Baptist doing what? Preaching, Preaching the Bible says. Amen? Preaching in the wilderness of Judea and what? And saying, Repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at? Amen. That preacher must have a message of repentance. Amen? Amen? One that calls you to put away sin, not one that dresses up your sin, not one that covers or hides your sin. That preacher must have a message that calls sin by its right name. Amen? Amen. Amen. So this is John. He comes preaching. In fact, the Jews in that time have had strayed away from God. And they needed uh, 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 someone to come and re refresh them, remind them, uh, uh, reform them, amen, of what God had said. Amen. Bring them to the point that they should have been since Mount Sinai, when God set them up as a nation and gave them two tables of stone. But they went so far away from the two tables of stone that the Lord had to come and call them back. But the Bible says, how can they call if there is no preacher? So what does he send? A preacher, a preacher John. Amen. John's message is repent. Let us go now to John chapter 1 because the Bible says John came saying. Let us hear what John said. It says, the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, what? Behold, the that preacher must point you to Christ. That preacher must point you to Christ, which taketh away the sin of the world. All right, verse 30. He says, this is he of whom I said, after me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he is before me. That preacher must also be one that exalts Christ and not self. This is what John did. He says, one that was what? Preferred be. So he brought himself low so that he can exalt the Lamb of God. Amen. Verse 35. Again, the next day after, after, John stood and two of his disciples. And looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith what? Behold the Lamb of God. This was John's message. Pointing his disciples to Christ. Amen. And the Bible says, and the, two, and the two disciples heard him what? Speaking. Because the Bible says, how shall they hear without a, without a preacher? So the Lord sent John, a preacher, to speak to his disciples. Amen? Amen? And the Bible says his two disciples what? Heard him speak, a fulfillment of the scripture. Amen. They heard him speak, and they what? And they followed Jesus. And I just want to pause here and make the point. That when we speak for these next few weeks, we'll be here for four weeks. If you, hear, uh, uh, if you hear the words we speak, you should follow Jesus. This is why we are here. That you may put away sin and follow Jesus. And see the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Now let us continue. It says, one of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his, his own brother Simon, and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. Now, two things in this verse I want to draw out. Simon Peter heard John, amen, and he followed Christ. And his very next activity was to bring Christ to others. If you hear God's voice in what we speak, go and tell your friend. Bring them to the meetings. Bring them to the live stream. Bring them to hear the words of Christ. Amen? Amen? This is what the Bible is teaching. 
If you hear God's word from the preacher, call somebody and say, come and see. Amen. Amen. Just like the woman at the well. She went preaching and said, come see a man. Amen. The next part, he says, we have found the Messiah. That was his message. Which is being interpreted the Christ. But who interpreted that for him? This is the question, right? Because every man that comes to the scripture needs an interpretation. So who interpreted it? Or what, or what do you need to interpret? To interpret, you need rules. Amen? To go from one language to the next, there are rules. Right? It, rules of grammar, syntax, punctuation, all these things. Right? This is how you're able to translate one language to the next. The Bible is the language of heaven. And we also need rules. Amen? One of the rules is, man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? So every word must have its proper bearing on the subject presented. Amen? Amen. So let us continue. It says, who interprets the scripture? All right? In one sense, we should already have a, have a slight idea because the Bible says, how shall they hear without a, a preacher? So therefore, the preacher interprets the scripture. Amen? Amen. Amen. But let us, let, us, let us continue. Where does the preacher get his interpretation from? Genesis 40 and verse 8, the Bible says, And they said unto him, We have dreamed the dream, and there is no what? No interpreter of it. This is the story of Joseph in the prison when the butler and the baker both had a dream. And they woke up, and this is what they said to Joseph. We've dreamed the dream, and there is no interpreter. But the Bible says, And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to, to God? Tell me them, I pray you. So Joseph was the preacher. Amen? But Joseph said, tell me a dream, and God shall interpret it. So your preacher must be connected to God. Amen? Amen. All right. So that word uh, interpret in that, in that text, in our interpreter, it comes from the Strong's H6623, and it means interpretation. But lower down, uh, 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 to the root, all right, it means, uh, uh, from H6622, it means to open up. So the job of an interpreter is to what? Open to open up that which you do not understand. The job of the preacher is to open up that which you do not understand. All right, the people didn't understand that there was a Christ among them in the days of the Jews. So what did John do? He opened up to them. The scriptures. And he said, Behold the Lamb of God, which what? Taketh away the sin of the world. He opened to them the scriptures. All right? Now let's go to Genesis 41 and verse 15 and 16. Here, Pharaoh had a dream. Pharaoh needed an interpreter. And Joseph, uh, the Bible says, And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say thee that thou canst understand a dream and interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not what? It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. So while we stand here and while we preach, it is not anything in us that is allowing us to expound the scriptures. But it is God, the God in us, the God that speaks through us, allows us to be able to understand and expound the scriptures to those in our hearing. Amen? Because the Bible says, how shall they hear without a, without a preacher? Our job is to stand here and share with you that which God has given us to share. All right? So let us continue. Daniel chapter 2. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar, another dream. That needed interpretation. So let us, um, let us read and let us see how uh, Daniel deals with this one. It says, and in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, wherewith his spirit was troubled, and his sleep broke from him. Then the king commanded all the magicians, and the astrologers, and the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans, for to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit is troubled to know the dream. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king in Syriac, O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream, 
and we will sure show the interpretation. So Nebuchadnezzar had a dreams and he called all his wise men. In other words, he called the preachers of his day. And he said, I dreamed the dream and I need the interpretation. And they said, show us the dream and we will show you the interpretation. But the king, the Bible says, the king answered and said unto the Chaldeans, the thing is gone from me. If you will, if you will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, he shall be cut in pieces and your houses shall be made a dunghill. But if he show the dream and the interpretation thereof, he shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. They answered again and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will show the, show the interpretation of it. The king answered and said, I know of a certainty that you would gain the time, because ye see the thing is gone from me. But if ye will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you, for ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me till the time be changed. Every preacher that do not know how to interpret God's word is a liar. This is what the Bible is teaching. Men will come and say, let me show you this and let me show you that. But the Bible says they're only preparing lying and corrupt words. The Bible is its own expositor. Amen? Amen. Every scripture must have its proper bearing upon the subject. Nothing revealed in scripture, we are told, is hid from those who ask in faith not. We read that. It says what? Seek and you shall find. Jeremiah says thy words were found and I did because he sought. Amen? Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Nothing revealed in scripture is hid to those who ask in faith while searching diligently. Amen? Amen. These, these thoughts, these rules we must come to the scripture with. We must have this, these understanding. There is another nice one. And this one that I've been doing thus far. The Bible, um, this rule says to understand doctrine, you must bring all the scriptures together on the subject that we wish to understand. And if you were following me up to this point, you would have seen that I brought all the scriptures necessary to show you how to have confidence in the scriptures. Amen? And as we follow along th this rule, the scripture is explaining, the scripture itself is using the rules that it gives. And when those rules are used, we can have sound confidence that one, that your minister is led of Christ and that you, when you study, is led of Christ. Amen? Amen. Let us continue. So we see here that the wise man prepared lying. And, uh, would, if, if, ne if Nebuchadnezzar had told him the dream, he would have, um, they would have prepared lying and corrupt words. And this, this brings this text to mind where the Bible says, the Lord had hid it from the wise and the prudent, right? Had they been able to know the dream, they would have uh, mystified it. But the Lord, in his mercy to his people, hid it from the wise and the, and the prudent. But he reveals it to Daniel. Amen? Let's continue. Verse 10. Then the Chaldeans answered, the, answered before the king and said, There is not a what? There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asks such things at any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. You know, that brings my mind to um, Matthew 16. When Jesus asks Peter or the disciples, whom do men say that I am? He was asking them for an interpretation. The Chaldeans just said to Nebuchadnezzar, no king. No Lord, no ruler ever asked man to interpret. But that's not true. Christ asked them, whom do you say that I am? And their response was what? Thou art the Christ. And Christ's response was what? Flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my Father in heaven. What did Joseph say? Interpretation belonged to whom? God. Peter received an interpretation from from God. So when they said there is no man, they demonstrated they, they didn't know God and Jesus Christ whom he had sent. Because it is true that kings and rulers will ask for an interpretation. But only those who have a connection to God will be able to provide that interpretation. 
Because the Bible says only the Father reveals these things unto us. Amen? Amen? Praise God. It says, and it is a rare thing that the king requireth, and there is none, that, none other that can show it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not where? They, they were right about that. Only the God of heaven could have shown this dream. Amen? Amen? And God, in his mercy, he has given us a book, a book that allows us to know him and Jesus Christ. He has given us the scriptures so that we can be able to interpret the vision. Amen? Amen? Let us continue. Then Daniel went into his house, went to his house, and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they would desire the mercies of God of the God of heaven concerning this. So they went and seek the Lord. Amen? Yes, while he may be found. Because there was a decree to kill them. But in the meantime, before the decree went forth, or before the execution of the decree, there was time. So they sought the Lord while he may be found. Because had they not sought the Lord, the decree would have come, and then it would have been too late. Amen? So before their probation closed, they sought the Lord. Amen? Amen. Praise God. The Bible says, Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. If we seek the Lord, the Bible tells us, we will find. If we trust in his word, he will explain it to us. He will send us an interpreter. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us continue. Revelation 5, the book of Revelation chapter 5 and verse 1. It's a similar um, situation with, with, with the wise men. The wise men said there was no man to interpret the dream. Amen? Revelation 5 has a similar um, storyline. John says, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a what? A book. A volume of a, of a book. Amen? And in that volume is written of Christ. Amen? He says, On the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. So that book is closed. So that book needs to be what? Opened, or in other words, interpreted. Because to interpret means to, to open. So, verse 2. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to what? Alright, let us take that word open, uh, interpret, which means open, and let us add it in there. Who is worthy to what? Interpret the book. Because another rule tells us, when we find our symbol explained, we bring it back to the text. Amen? Amen. So to open and to interpret is the same word, and you can use them interchangeably in this text. So it says, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And the Bible says, and no what? No man. Isn't that what the Chaldeans said? Mm -hmm. That there was no man uh, that could um, interpret the dream? In other words, no man that could open the the book. So the same thing here in Revelation. It says that no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to do what? To open or to interpret the book. In other words, Christ. Christ had prevailed. He came, he died, he resurrected, he overcome, overcame the enemy, and he has prevailed to interpret the scriptures for us. Amen? Amen? And as he interprets it, he says, As my Father sent me, so send I you. And he sends his servants out. He sends his disciples, his preachers, to go forward before men, and open the scriptures to them. But not only to open the scriptures, but to also teach men how to interpret the scriptures. Because when you go, you ought to make disciples after Christ. Amen? Amen. So, we will close on this um, final text. I believe this is the last one. It says in Luke 24 and 27, If Christ, the Bible says Christ was worthy to open. And while Christ was on earth, he demonstrated that in Luke chapter 24, verses 23, 
27 to 32 and 44 and 45. It says, And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded, now that word expounded is the same as explained or interpret. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And we'll see that the Bible tells us that this word expounded means to interpret. And they drew, and they drew nigh unto the village whither they went. And he made as though he would have gone what? If Christ had left, he would have been gone. Amen? Amen. So they sought him while he may be found. Amen? Amen? Yes, call upon him while he was near. Amen? It says, and, but they constrained him. In other words, they sought him. They called upon him, saying, Abide with us, for it is evening, and the day is far spent. And he turned in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread. And what? What, what is bread according to the scriptures we learned today? The word, the word of God. He took the bread and blessed it and did what? And break it and gave it to them. What, what did he give it to them to do? To eat. So what was, their, what was their language? Thy words were found and we did, we did eat them. And they were unto us a rejoicing of the heart. Amen? Let us continue. They said it in verse 44. And he said unto them, no, sorry, verse 31. Verse 31. And their eyes were what? Open. open. He expounded and their eyes were what? Open. So what does the word expounded mean? Open. To open or to interpret. It's right here in the scriptures. Just bring the scriptures together. The scripture explains itself. Amen? Amen. It says, their eyes were open and they what? And they knew him. Of a very second text. It says, this is life eternal, that they may what? Amen. Know thee, the only true God, and whom? Jesus and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast. Okay. So in knowing Christ in that moment, they also knew the Father. Amen? Amen? And the Bible says the Father is the one that gives the revelations. Amen? Amen? It says flesh and blood did not reveal that, but my Father in heaven. Amen? Only the Father can reveal Christ to us. Let us continue. It says, And their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished out of there. Praise God, they sought him while he may be found. Because after they find him, what happened? He vanished. Amen? It says, And they said to one another, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way? And while he opened to us the, or uh, while he interpreted to us the, the scriptures? Verse 44. And he said unto them, These words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning whom? Me, the one who is written in the volume of the book. Amen? So he tells us the Moses and, and the what? Prophets. And the prophets and the Psalms. Psalms. He, he even tells us where to look for him. Amen. Literally, Moses and all the prophets. Amen? Amen. It's, it's the Bible. And he says specifically the Psalms. Which means there is some powerful light about Christ in the Psalms. Amen. He mentions it by name. Amen? Amen? Let us continue. Then opened he their understanding that they might what? Understand. That they might understand the scriptures. Why? Because they searched the scriptures. Amen? Amen. So after you receive an understanding, or after your preacher has preached to you, or even when you study and you go in there and Christ opened the scriptures to you, this text should be your testimony. Because this is John, Christ's beloved disciple. This is what he testifies, him and Peter. Two testimonies. John says, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of whom? God. Of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of whom? Of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath witness in himself. He that believeth not hath made him a liar, because he believed not the what? The record that God gave of his son, because they believe not the scriptures. Because the record of the son is the scriptures. Christ says, lo, it is written where? In the book. In the volume of the book, it is written of me. So if you don't believe that record, the Bible says you made God a liar. Let us continue. And this is the record that God has given us what? 
eternal life, and this life is in his this life is in the Bible. This eternal life is in the Bible. We must have confidence in the Bible. Eternal life is there for us, free and for the taking. Amen? Amen. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things I have written that ye, that unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may what? That ye may know that he hath what? And the Bible says, this is life eternal, that he may? No. no, but it says, these things were written. That you may? know. In the volume of that book is where you find a knowledge of eternal life. It says, that ye may have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And we know that the Son of God is come. We what? We know that the Son of God is come. And hath what? Given us an understanding. And we just read in Luke uh, 24, right? That he opened up the scriptures to them from Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. And he gave them understanding. So this is John. This is a record. He's telling you exactly what happened there in Luke, right? He's saying that, that you may know that you have eternal life and, and that you may believe on his name and that you know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. This should be our testimony after, speaking, after learning of Christ. Amen. That this is the true God, and that this is eternal life. This is perfect health. Right, Sister Val? Amen. Because eternal life is perfect health. And finally, a second witness. Peter, in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 16, he echoes a similar sentiment to John. It says, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. So he has also sure. Amen? When we made known unto you the power and what? Coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory. When he came... When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven, we what? We heard. Praise God. After you hear the preacher and you find Christ, you will hear the voice of the Father. Amen? Because Peter says we were eyewitnesses of the Son. Amen? And because of that, he says what? We heard the voice of the Father saying what? This is my... Beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. He says, And this voice we heard when we were with him in the Holy Mount. But then he continues, We have also. All right? So when we read the scriptures and we find Christ, and we see that the Bible indeed testifies of Christ, we cannot stop there. The Bible says, We have what? Also. also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well, that ye take heed as a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy came not in old time by the will of what? Amen. It's not, no man interprets it. Amen? Amen? By the will of man, but holy men of God spake. Daniel spake. Moses spake, Isaiah spake, amen, as they were what? Moved by the Holy Ghost. And so I pray, I pray that tonight's presentation would have indeed uh, opened a window to your mind into a new world. We take, we're going from the natural world into the spiritual world. We're no longer eating natural bread. We're now eating the spiritual bread, Amen. We're, 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 we're studying the book and we're learning the language of heaven. All right? So I pray that tonight's uh, presentation would have been uh, uh, um, instrumental in introducing to you a new world. One where there is eternal life. This is what Christ came to give us. He says, this is life eternal, that they may know thee, 
the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. And the only place way we can know Christ is to study the scriptures. He says, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have what? Eternal life. And they are they which testify of, of me. So I pray that, that our newfound confidence in the scriptures will introduce to us a new world and, and causing us to, 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 to joy like Jeremiah. He says that words were found and I did eat them. And there was found in them a joy and a rejoicing of the heart. Amen. Amen. And when we come back to uh, Wednesday night, we will enter into prophecy. We will introduce what is prophecy, what does it mean for us, and these varying things. We will talk about prophecy. We'll get a glimpse of how the Bible interprets prophecy and how the Bible presents prophecy. And as we go together, now we can have an, an, a confidence that the prophecies in the scripture came not by men, but by holy men as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So join us on Wednesday night, 6.30. Uh, we have the um, song service followed by the health presentation, followed by a presentation in God's Word. So we'll do this Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday for the next four weeks. Join us as we go into God's Word and as we introduce the bread of life. Shall we close with a word of prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, uh, for the bread of life. We thank you, Lord, for these moments where we can uh, gather, Lord, to eat and partake in such a wonderful feast, Lord. The, word, the Bible says that your word is sweet as honey uh, to the taste. And indeed, Lord, it is sweet. And so we pray, O oh Lord, that you will help us uh, to seek you, Lord, while you may be found, while there is still time, while probation is open. O oh Lord, that we can seek and we can eat all that is necessary, all that we need for nourishment, all that we need, O oh Lord, that we can have good health here in this dark and evil world. We pray that you'll forgive us, Lord, um, where error uh, was put forth. And if, 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 if there is any, Lord, we pray that you'll bring it back to us. But Father, by God's grace, we know that holy angels were here. We know that the Holy Spirit uh, has led us, Lord, and guided us into all truth. And so we pray for this leading. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you will go forward with these words into the hearing of those who are here, those who are online, and those, Lord, who will listen uh, in the future. Be with us throughout the rest of this evening, and into your hands we rest uh, our mortal selves. And we ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen.